In this video, we are going to go over the second secret to the Winterfell Crips. Many of you already know where I stand in terms of the Night King, but you're not sold yet. In this video, I'm going to share many more details as to why I believe what I believe. So Ned goes down into the Crips in his very first chapter with Bobby B. King Robert tells Ned that he needs Ned down in King's Landing because he is surrounded by flatterers and fools. The lies they tell. Half of them don't dare to tell him the truth, and the other half can't find it. That sets up the point of the Crips. Lies. The Crip dreams, the dialogues that occur in the Crips, and the events like Shaggy Dog fighting Summer down there, they all give us clues into two major lies. Yesterday, we went over the first, Jon Snow's secret identity. Today, we are going to go over the second secret hidden in the Winterfell Crips. As always, please call me Barbie and Blue Rooster for becoming channel members, and the Queen Mod, Chrissy of Old Stones, and Nicole Rowellefson for helping in the campaign to save a child's life. Thanks, guys. All right. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. We've got the Rhaegar and Lyanna love story, a song of ice and fire. Rhaegar did not kidnap Lyanna. He loved her, and they had a baby. This rhymes with the legend of Bale the Bard and the Stark Girl. And it rhymes more recently with Klepto Sam rescuing Gilly from Craster's Geek, as well as Mance Raider's Mission Impossible subplot in the books to rescue Arya, who turns out to be Sansa's best friend Jane Poole, false Arya. As we went over in yesterday's video, many of the clues to the Jon Snow reveal can be found in the crypts. In Bran's crypt dream, in Ned's crypt dream, and in his flashback while standing in front of Lyanna's tomb. In the chat Ned has there with King Robert, in Jon Snow's crypt dreams, and in the discussions that Jon has with Sam about those dreams. That's why we say that the first secret to the crypt of Winterfell is Jon Snow's secret identity. But there's a second secret hidden down there, and considering how George R. R. Martin tends to develop his reveals, can you guess what it is? A second secret identity. Who could it be? And here we have Bronn, son of... You wouldn't know it. Let's figure it out by digging into every character's experience with the Crips, starting with Jon Snow. Jon Snow has Crip dreams. Twice, we ride along with Jon in the dream, and once, we learn about it through one of his two chats with Sam about the dreams. The key takeaway from Jon Snow's Crip dreams is that the Kings of Winter want Jon to go away. They make him feel as if he's not welcome there. Meanwhile, Rob and Ned Stark are up above, at a feast in the Great Hall, a feast of the dead. The question is, do Jon Snow's dreams highlight Jon's own self-judgment, or are the spirits of the dead real? And if the latter is true, do the Stone Kings dislike Jon because he has the dragon's blood in him, because he is a bastard, or because of something else? Let's find out. Let's compare Jon's experience with the Crips to the other Stark children, Theon, and also Ned. Bran, Rickon, and Arya, they're comfortable in the Crips. When Arya thinks of home, one of the things that she thinks about is the Crips. Rickon goes down there several times by himself at just four years old. Rickon was not afraid. And Bran never feared the Crips either. The faces were stern and strong, and some had done terrible things. But they were Starks, every one. Bran actually felt safer in the darkness. The Stone Lords gave him courage. Both Bran and Arya note that the kids played games down there. So the true-born Stark children were comfortable in the Crips. This is in stark contrast to Theon. Theon was no stranger to the Crips, but he never liked them. He had never felt comfortable in the Crips. He could feel the Stone King staring down at him with their stone eyes, stone fingers curled around the hilts of rusted longswords. None had any love for Ironborn. Even Ned felt the stares of the Stone Lords, specifically when Robert made a crude joke down there and the Stone Lords looked on with cold, disapproving eyes. So let's go back to our questions. John's crypt dreams were dark, full of judgment, but was John judging himself for being a bastard? Or was John being judged by the Stone Kings? Well, Ned and Theon both noticed that the iron swords were rusted away or missing, and wondered if that meant that the ghosts were free to roam the castle. And it seems they were, because Ned, Theon, and Bran all felt stares of the Stone Kings, which suggests that John was in fact being judged by the Stone Kings. So let's figure out why they judge John by analyzing these four rhyming stories. Gilly escaping Craster, False Arya escaping Ramsay, and Lyanna escaping Robert Baratheon, and her father, Lord Rickard Stark. 
Lady Dustin and Theon discussed Lord Rickard while they were down in the crypts. Lord Rickard had had great ambitions, southern ambitions, which is why he tried marrying Brandon to Lady Catelyn. When Brandon died, Lord Rickard married Lord Eddard to Catelyn, and Lord Rickard tried to marry Lyanna to Robert Baratheon, but she escaped her father, and she escaped Robert Baratheon with Rhaegar. And then we have this fourth story, Bale the Bard, which is similar to Rhaegar and Lyanna, but the primary difference is that the Stark girl did not escape. She hid in the crypts of Winterfell, and down there, she gave birth to her child. But here's the thing. Egret told Jon Snow this story of Bale the Bard. That does not mean that it's real. Jon Snow had never heard the story before, and the Winterfell Chronicles do not include the story. But here are eight clues suggesting that this story is very important, and thus, that this story is real. Clue number one, the Rose of Winterfell. Lyanna Stark's favorite flower was the Blue Winter Rose. She even died with rose petals in her hand. We learn this from Ned's flashback while he's down in the crypt, as well as Ned's crypt dream later in the story. We also learn this in Theon's dream of the Winterfell Feast of the Dead. Similarly, Bale the Bard won Lord Brandon's favor. He asked for the fairest flower in the garden and was given a blue winter rose. And the next morning, they found that rose on the Stark girl's bed, but the Stark girl was gone. When John recounts the story to Corrin, John actually calls the Stark girl the Rose of Winterfell because Bell had asked for the fairest flower that blooms in the gardens of Winterfell, and he chose the girl. The icing on the cake to this first of eight clues is that Sam stole a gilly, a gilly flower. Clue number two, Bran, Rickon, Hodor, and Asha hid from Theon down in the crypts. And the Rose of Winterfell, she also hid down in the crypts, history repeating. Number three, both Rhaegar and Bale were falsely accused of kidnapping the Stark girls. And number four, Rhaegar would sing of twilights and tears and the death of kings. Rhaegar loved his harp more than his sword, and Bale the Bard was a bard. Number five, Rhaegar died in the Ruby Ford, and Bale died in the Frozen Ford. And if you believe that Mance is Rhaegar, then Bale's child and Jon Snow both unknowingly killed their biological fathers. History repeating. Lyanna died in the Tower of Joy, and the Rose of Winterfell, she threw herself from a tower, most likely the same tower that Bran fell from. So it's no coincidence that George R. R. Martin highlighted that when Bran went down into the crypts to see Ned Stark's ghost, and he discusses Lyanna in front of her tomb, well, that was the first time that Bran had been down there since he had been thrown from the tower. Two more. These are big. Clue number eight, Mance Raider. George R. R. Martin gave Mance a huge subplot in the books, this Mission Impossible subplot, where he sent to rescue Arya, or at least the girl whom they think is Arya. And it's important that it's Arya because Arya resembles Lyanna in so many ways. She looks like her. She's a great horse rider. She's wild like Lyanna. She also had the wolf's blood. So this connects the rescue subplot to Rhaegar and Lyanna. On top of that, George R. R. Martin had Mance Raider use a fake name, Abel, which is an anagram for Bale. So that's a big clue. And here's the icing on the cake. Clue number nine, the ghost of Winterfell. Obviously, the Bale the Bard story rhymes very closely with the love song of Ice and Fire, Lyanna and Rhaegar. So Bale's child has a very similar origin story to Jon Snow. As we said earlier, the Stark children played games in the crypts, and we get one detailed account of a game that they played down there. So Rob Stark led the younger Starks down into the crypts, and then Jon Snow popped out to scare them. He was covered in flour, F-L-O-U-R, flour, but... It's another nod to both Lyanna and Bale's girl, the Rose of Winterfell. But the main point here is that Jon is down in the crypts acting as the ghost of Winterfell. We'll get back to this. So let's go back to what we said earlier. Bale's child was born in the crypts of Winterfell because that's where the Rose of Winterfell hid. So the next question is, who is that child? Obviously, putting aside Bronn, we have one key character in the story with an unknown backstory, the Night King. Can we connect this child to the Night King? Yep. First, let's go over four clues connecting Winterfell and the Crypts to the Night Fort. The first fort on the wall, the fort where the 13th Lord Commander, the Night's King ruled with the Night's Queen, the place where Simeon Star Eyes saw hellhounds fighting. Clue number one, Pies and Guest Right. The Prince of Winterfell is a Theon chapter where Mance Raider's going around as Abel and he's secretly killing people inside Winterfell. He is causing chaos for the Boltons. He's breaking guest right. Meanwhile, 
Manderly is smashing pies as a subtle jab aimed at the phrase in the Boltons in regards to the Red Wedding, where some of his family was killed. And remember, the first legendary breach of Gesturay occurred at the Night Fort, the Rat Cook, who served an Andal King a pie made of his own son. Which leads into number two, songs. During the wedding ceremonies, people kept asking for songs such as the Rat Cook and Brave Danny Flynn, songs based on tragic events at the Night Fort. And on top of that, Abel once sings the song about the Dornishman's wife, but he changes the lyrics to the Northman's daughter. In effect, a clear nod to both Lyanna and the Rose of Winterfell, the two key Stark daughters of this story. Clue number three, the Corpse Queen. The prior chapter began with False Arya's wedding, and False Arya looked scared. Dian thinks that she had a face carved of ice. She was a corpse buried in snow. Both of these are nods to the legendary Night's Queen of the Night Fort, the woman also referred to as the Corpse Queen. And clue number four, the Hellhounds. This is one of my favorites, and it also foreshadows Clegane Bowl. You go to Hellhound. Wordplay. I drift. Shaggy Dog gets into two fights down in the crypts. The first time, it took Robin Grey Wind to bring him to bay. And the second time, Shaggy Dog fights Summer. When that happens, Bran looks up at the wall and in the light of the guttering torch, Shadow Wolves 20 feet tall fought on the wall and roof. More wordplay, Shadow Wolves 20 feet tall fighting on a wall. It just so happens that this fight occurs in a chapter that began with a reference to Simeon Star Eyes. The legend, who we mentioned earlier, supposedly saw Hellhounds fighting at the Night Fort. The Hellhounds most likely being the Night's King and his half-brother, Brennan the Breaker. The Bastard of Winterfell versus the King of Winterfell. So this dire wolf fight between Shaggy Dog and Summer down in the crypts, it's another connection to the Night Fort. So what does this all mean? We began this video by pointing out that the opening scene in the crypts highlights that the crypts are about lies. The first secret to the crypts of Winterfell was Jon Snow's secret identity. And since George R. R. Martin is telling a story about balance with repeating events and rhyming events, it makes sense that a second secret to the crypts of Winterfell would also be about a secret identity. We know that Bale's child's origin parallels Jon Snow's, and since Jon's secret identity is the first secret to the Crypt of Winterfell, it's logical to deduce that the second secret identity would be Bale's child, the child born in the Crypt of Winterfell. He is the second secret to the Crypt of Winterfell. Now, if that child is important, the only real candidate to be that child is the Night King, and he might be because we have several connections between the Abel scene, the Crypt scenes, and the Legends of the Night Fort, where the Night's King ruled. So now we have a clue as to why the Stone Kings were judging John, why they wanted him to go away. Because the Starks of old went to war with the Night's King, and the Stone Kings either hate John since his origin story so closely parallels the Night King, or because the Stone Kings are even confusing John for the Night King, especially if the Night King goes by the same name as John. King Snow. King Snow. He is the White Wolf. The King in the North. You've never been down south. I've been to Winterfell. The King in the North. And now, we also have a better idea of what the Dead King's Rising represents. It doesn't represent a Lord of the Rings style rising of the Stark Ghost. It represents the Night King, who has reappeared for the first time in hundreds, if not thousands, of years. John once acted as the Ghost of Winterfell but the Night King truly is the ghost of Winterfell. Now let's go back to the very last words of Lord Eddard's very first chapter. This occurs at the end of the very first scene in the crypts. For a moment, Eddard Stark was filled with a terrible sense of foreboding. This was his place here in the north. He looked at the stone figures all around them, breathed deep in the chill silence of the crypt. He could feel the eyes of the dead. They were all listening, he knew. And winter was coming. The Night King was born right there where Ned's standing thinking this in the crypts. And as Bran thought earlier, some of them had done terrible things. And the Night King was probably betrayed by the man whom I believe to be his half-brother, Bran and the Breaker. I propose that after that fight, the Night King fled north and was converted into the Night King. So now the Night King's in the north. And as they mention in the chapter, which just so happens to be called the Ghost of Winterfell, the North Remembers. There are more details to go over, but we'll get to those in the brand's final purpose video. Hit subscribe and have a great new year, guys. Isn't it? 
No, that doesn't sound right. King John? It doesn't matter. 